Let's go. We're live. It's 3.15 a.m. Early Tuesday morning. Let's get this situated. We're in the garage. Welcome. Ah. And I realize some folks may be watching later on. So I'm still just kind of waiting for anyone to show up. <laughs> Sometimes it takes a while. One person's here. Awesome. Uh, I was just out here in the garage having a smoke, having a beer, recording a first impression of a tobacco that I've started uh, smoking tonight. And I thought, why not go live? It's fun. So anyway, we're in the garage. Wind's coming out of the south. So it's a little, it's a little windy on the back porch. But here, it's perfect. So, hope everyone's doing well. Let's see. Christopher, New York City 276. Hey man, newbie pipe here. Well, hello Christopher. I'll be happy to answer any pipe questions you may have, but welcome to the welcome to the hobby. The pastime of smoking. Welcome to the YouTube pipe community. Chris Brunton, hello from St. Phillips. Hello, hello. So, I just put up a like a regular video. So I'm smoking tonight a crumble cake from Captain Earl's private stock. And it's a crumble cake. Looks like a big old brownie. It's good. Aaron Van Pelt, how is the Texas weather? I miss Texas. Lived in her station in Colleen for four years, minus the deployments. Well, Aaron, it's all right. We got some wind out of the south right now, but it's been very dry. It's been very windy. We've had uh, some wildfires lately. Uh, my parents live about five miles that way, and uh, their their road caught on fire a few days ago. Like some of the some of the property on their road, there was a wildfire. Their house is fine. They're safe. But uh, it's a little, it's been a little precarious. The wind gets really gusty, but otherwise, it's been pretty warm, and I like it. Let's see. Chris says thank you. Got a Nording bent Dublin and a Keystone pipe. Pretty cool, he says. Yeah, I've seen those Keystone pipes. Those uh, those look neat, and I hope that I hope that works out for you. That's cool. I love the pipe smoking hobby. And I do love, I actually, the more and more I think about it, the more I really do enjoy living out here in West Texas. The weather at night is wonderful. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. Glad to hear everyone is well and safe. Yeah. I think one house burned down, but there were no injuries. And that's what we got insurance for. So, you know. Just be glad it was a home, it was a house that got destroyed and nobody got burned or whatever. Mm. Got the uh, Corona Old Boy lighter, it's wonderful. This is the uh, crumble cake I'm smoking on. Pretty tasty. Not quite the lot of Kia bomb that pirate cake is for sure. Let's see. Briar Beard. Captain Earl sounds worth checking out. Saw your impression. Oh. Thank you, Briar Beard. Yeah, I just put that up about 20 minutes ago. It's a good it's 
pretty good. I let the pipe rest a minute and I'm, it's the same bowl that I'm smoking right now. It's good. This kind of tobacco, it, it just kind of morphs and evolves throughout the bowl. So it's good. Got some easy, easy IPA. It's about 5.2% alcohol. It's from uh, Deep Ellum Brewing. It's Dallas. It's pretty nice. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So, what is everybody doing up at this time of night? I know my excuse. I work at night, and I'm getting ready to get back into the swing of things, go back on uh, Wednesday night. Briarbid's been on quiet nights lately. Picked that up after my review. Very nice. Quiet Nights by GLPs. It's a... Uh, it's like Penzance killer, I think. Let's see. Christopher's got a... <laughs> this is just regular crazy schedule. I got you. I haven't worked just because of some work training that I had to do. And then I took some time off because my family was here over the weekend. It'll be like almost two weeks before since I've worked a shift. Mm. At the hospital. So. I still remember how to be a nurse. I'm just going to be a little rusty at first. <laughs> Mexican dinner from last night. Decided it was time for me to be awake. Lol. <laughs> I hear you, buddy. <laughs> I totally get that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm sure I won't be on too terribly long tonight. Uh, it's just fun. Let's see. Aaron works night shifts as a deputy in West Virginia. Can't break the sleep schedule. I always enjoy the quiet of the night. Best time to smoke. Uh, yeah. Sheriff's deputy, thank you for protecting and serving. Um, I was a military law enforcement in the Air Force. But that is, it's such a, almost a, st not a sterile environment, but it's so much more tame than m civilian law enforcement. Jim Beam and Lancer Slices fixes almost anything. Amen. Lancer. Yes. Let's see. Thank you for your service. Which branch, if I may ask? Air Force. Off we go into the wild blue yonder. Air Force cop. So I didn't get to... I work nights as well. So I didn't get to... I wasn't in the chair force. <laughs> as some people like to say. I actually had to, to do stuff. But, got out. Let's see. Aaron was Army Infantry, 07 to 12. And I guess you talked about deployments. I'm guessing Afghanistan or Iraq. I spent some time in Iraq. It's pretty hot over there. Not a lot to see. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ugh. But this is the life. This is what it's all about. Sitting in the dark, having a drink, having a smoke, just chatting with some new friends. 
What could be better? I will say, let's see, uh, two years in Iraq, one Mosul in uh, 08 and 09, and then one from 10 to 11 in Almara. I don't know where Almara is. 0304, I was in Kirkuk in the Air Force. That was interesting. And then after I got out of the military in 06, I went and I was at Al Assad for two years. Uh, came back in 08. Worked with the Marines there. I was a private contractor, but no, not a paramilitary. Picked up pipe smoking in Almara. Got my first pipe at a haji shop and picked up some cat and black cherry. <laughs> That's what I, I started smoking a little bit more when I was in uh, Al Assad. Um, unfortunately, it was the Captain Blacks that I was able to get a hold of and did not encourage me to <laughs> keep smoking. Almara is south as hell between Iraq and and the and I ran in the swamps. Wow. There were so many little stations and places I heard of. So many. But you know. Appreciate your service. Of course. I mean that's that goes without saying. If you're military, if you're in a underappreciated job. There's so many out there. You know what? If you work, <laughs> if you work, thank you. It's, it's hard. It's tough to stay motivated. So, but thanks especially to our military forces. Um, if y'all have Amazon Prime Video, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch it up just a little bit. There's a documentary y'all have to see, and it's it's great. I watched it a few years ago, and I've been waiting for it to to come back. I think I saw it on Netflix. It's a it's a documentary about pinball, of all things. Now I used to play pinball machines a little bit. Uh, they're hard to find these days, but this is a documentary about pinball and the people who love to play pinball. And there are some. It's just funny the the strange characters that they that they show in this in these documentaries they're it's gleefully you get these uh cringy kind of geeky fellas who are like no nah, i'm not married you can't be married and love pinball you know and i think someone asked them there were these two guys you know they're Kind of your textbook geeky nerd dork fellas, you know, and someone was like, "If the right woman came along, would you give up your pinball?" You know, and I, and these guys, they've got like fifty pinball machines in their house, and one of them was like, "No way, I'll never give up my pinball," and the other one was like, "Yeah, I probably would." <laughs> Let's see, Briarbeard loves pinball. Unfortunately, kids today. We'll never know the game. That's right. It's a lost art. For sure. There are places you can go and play. There are a lot of, uh, in a lot of major cities, they've got, like, arcades. And they've got old machines that you can play. Uh, I went, when I was in Nashville a few years ago, we went into this place. You just pay them, like, ten bucks. And you go in, and it's arcade games, pinball machines, and it's all on free play. As much as you want to play. I was like, that is a great idea. Because it was like re-entering my childhood. So, there are some places, but unfortunately it's hard to find that. Yeah, sadly it's a game that's hardly ever around. Used to be in every pizzeria, an arcade place at the mall. Let's see. Wi-Fi pinball coming up. <laughs> hmm. 
I gotta say, I loved playing pinball. I, as a teenager going into the local arcade at our mall, which is now a restaurant, um, there would be, you know, Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter and uh, the racing games, Ninja Turtles. I just liked to play pinball. I thought that was fun. I stunk. I really was terrible at it. Um, I, you know, you got the little flippers always just whoop, right between. I was like, damn it. Always. Yeah, you can't beat the the hands-on experiences. Absolutely. But this documentary, it's showing these, these guys with, they're like, yeah, I got like 70 pinball machines in my house right now. They had little, you know, those plastic sheds in their backyard stuffed with pinball machines. They're in their garage. Like, yeah, I built this loft so I could put another machine up there. My wife's getting a little annoyed. I'm like, that's crazy. But at the same time, I'm like, I want a pinball machine. <laughs> it's like the difference between smoking a pipe and watching someone else smoke a pipe, says Briarbeard. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I I do want to... I do want to revisit... I wouldn't mind getting a... I actually wouldn't mind getting a pinball machine. But I don't have the room. And I have so many hobbies right now that my wife... My wife would just kick my butt. And I wouldn't blame her. Unless she happens to like pinball. Then it's a go. <laughs> Yeah, but <laughs> good morning, everybody. Says Pipe Tree. Pipes don't grow on trees. Pipes come from the root of the briar bush. Let's talk about the pipe tree. That's like a stand. Let's see. There you go. Plant the seed. Let her have the pinball idea. She doesn't want to watch the documentary. I was like, hey, you want to watch this, this show? She's like, no. Oh, well. I remember watching it a few years ago, and I was like, ooh, I want to get, I want to get back into pinball. And like a day later, I w I'd completely forgotten about it. So <laughs> it's, it's going to leave my mind in a day or two anyway. Which is fine. But I had um, lots of family down over the weekend. It's my grandmother's 87th birthday. So aunts and uncles and cousins from all over the state of Texas came from far away. Like from Houston. That's like 500 miles. They came up. A lot of them stayed at my parents' house. My brother, one of my brothers came in from Nashville, and it was a, uh, it was a busy weekend. It was very, very fun. It was a lot of uh, visiting, not very restful at all, unfortunately. But it was, it's still fun. It's worth it. You know, when you go on trips to see family, there's not a lot of, it's very hectic. It's not a lot of rest, but it's still, it's still nice. Aaron says, speaking of documentaries, have you seen the previews for Father the Flame? I wonder if it would help push the surgence of the hobby. I've uh, not seen the previews, although I've had the opportunity to see that. I know it's a, it's like this documentary about, about pipe smoking that's still in development. I do like Cornell and Deal's uh, tobacco blend called Father of the Flame, which is supposed to promote that documentary. 
And when it comes out, I'll I'll be happy to buy it. If when Father of the Flame is released, I'll be happy to uh, to watch it, support it. But we've been waiting. I think they were trying to talk about it last year in Chicago. One day, Zay May. Hello, hello. Well, hello, one day, Zay May. That is a lot of words in your name. One day, Zay May. Hmm. Anyway. Yeah, I would definitely love to see that documentary when it comes out. In the meanwhile, in the meantime, I got YouTube, I got Amazon Prime, and I got Netflix to keep me busy. One day Zay May asks, where am I from? And Bearded Piper, 1978, says, what's up, Mayor? I'm, I'm doing great. And one day Zay May, I'm from... West Texas, a small town called Big Spring. So, lived here, we moved here when I was seven years old. And I've lived away here, I've lived away from here. Let's see, nice. You're in Lubbock. Ah, 100 miles. That way. <laughs> cool. I need to make a trip to Lubbock. Need to visit your specs <laughs> and uh, your your brick and mortar. Was it Heroes and Legacies or something like that? And name a few more. Don't you have some good uh, tobacco shops out there? Bearded Piper, 1978s in Kentucky. Cool. I got a lot of my uh, good friends in the YouTube pipe community in Kentucky, Lexington, Louisville, uh, Independence. You know, right south of. Cincinnati. A lot of great, uh, some of my best friends come from Kentucky. And yet I've never been. I need to go. I'll be in, uh, Nashville again in September. I'm gonna have that meetup again. If y'all don't know, if y'all aren't aware, there used to be a pipe show in Nashville, and then they quit doing it, lack of funding. But whenever I go, I tell people, and people still show up. We have a good up, we have a good old meetup, and it's a lot of fun. So it will be done again this year. Let's see, just a few, not a lot at all. Cigar shop and a couple of places selling. Specialized tobacco. Well, it's nice to have any place that's, that sells, you know, any kind of tobacco. We have a couple of places here in Big Spring that sells uh, cigars. And uh, the, the train car, cigar bar, still has a few tins of Frog Morton there. So I might pick up one or two of those tins this week. Even though the price is ridiculous because of taxes. Pipe Tree is in Oxford, England. Very cool. I hear it's very nice. I would like to visit England. I would love to visit Ireland, Scotland. Australia. Let's see. Big Spring just experienced the biggest tourist boom ever. <laughs> I need an IPA. Vidor, Texas. Hey, Derek. Where is Vidor? Let's see. We probably have more. I just haven't looked into it. I just got here by searching live in Texas. <laughs> hmm. Beaumont, super east, like way east. I think, uh, yeah, Beer Joy. Yeah, I know where, <laughs> I do know where, I was born in Houston, so I know where, where Beaumont is. I think 
I think uh, Beard Joy, Beard Oil, is out of Beaumont. Kevin Slocum, I believe is his name. Hey. Hmm. I like a good IPA. It's nice, the things that they can do with the, with the hops. They can make it taste bitter and citrusy or uh, tropical. Do I like East or West Texas better? I like where I live. I do like West Texas. I do feel at home here. If I wanted to go East, I'd probably stop in Nashville. I got two brothers that live there. And it's uh, it's just really nice. I've been a, uh, you know, I've been in the military. I've been around different places in the world. I've lived in different states: Montana, Alaska. Lived in big cities. Lived in small towns. So I personally can live anywhere. But um, I think we're gonna stick here. We got pretty deep roots here in West Texas. I can just, you know, I'm pretty happy. One day, Zay may ask, what branch? Oh, we were just talking about this earlier. I was in the Air Force. Air Force Security Forces. Initially stationed in Great Falls, Montana, for about a year and a half. Went to Alaska for a year after 9-11. Then I was stationed in... Uh, <coughs> um, San Antonio. Bearded Piper's been to Montana. Wants us to move there. Ziegenbach, the beer I missed most from Texas. I actually have not had that. My brother was here the other day and had Ziegenbach. I like Shinerbach and I also like this other Bach. Bach Slider. <laughs> it's good. Bearded Piper, you've been to Montana. Where'd you hang out? What city were you in, or, where, or were you just kind of just passing through? I was stationed at, uh, I was like, oh, you're in Bozeman. Very nice. I was in Great Falls. Nice, man. What was your MOS? I was only ever at Lackland for basic. Ah, so you were in, too. Uh, <laughs> MOS. I think that's an army thing. My AFSC, <laughs> which is the Air Force version of uh, MOS, I was a cop, security forces. Let's see, want a trip to the Marlboro Ranch, believe it or not. Wow. I don't know what that is, but it sounds cool. Any kind, if you win a trip to a ranch, I would imagine it's a pretty magnificent ranch. I mean, I, I know what a ranch is, obviously. I know what a ranch is. They grow salad dressing there. It's a retirement home for cowboys with oxygen tanks. <laughs> See what you did there. <laughs> Very funny. Oh, by the way, this is a Boswell poker. Handcrafted by J.M. Boswell in 2014. I've never been to Boswell's. Never been to Pennsylvania, to be honest. But I'd love to go. My brother's wife is from like Harrisburg, Pittsburgh. So not that I'd ever visit, not that I'm really on the radar, not that it's on the radar to visit her family, but it'd be nice. Pop into Boswell's. 
pick up some Northwoods. See that shop? I've seen videos of uh, Boswell's. It's very nice. Hmm. I'm sure I'm getting close to the end of this bowl. Watched One Man Smoke videos on it. Looked amazing. Good old Salam. You know, I've met Salam a few times. He comes, he came to, he came out to the, uh, I was real surprised last year. Um, yeah, MHM, that's cool. I was a special vehicle ops. Very cool. I'm sorry, I didn't even mention what I was. I was like, oh, or did I? Cops. I was a cop. Air Force Security Forces. I'm sorry. Yeah, he's a very nice fellow in that smoke. Just watched a posting from Danny Shore from the hospital. Looks like he's undergone brain surgery. What? Oh man, I gotta I gotta check that out, I guess, after I get off here. Let's see, MP thumping those hard head. Yeah. Yeah, Danny Shore's a you know, he's like a YouTube hero of mine, one of the first people to send me a like a Yabo. So that was it was very cool. Um Yeah, one man smoke. I uh like I said I've done that. I last year I basically just announced I'm going to Nashville in September and if anybody wants to meet up with me, let's go, you know, show up, you know, and I and you know, got Eddie from the Pipe Nook. Eric and Angela, Boontar, Berg, um, Javi Pipes, you know, just a bunch of, just tons of folks. Um, and Salam came out too. So it's like I, say, I get to see him every year in Nashville. So that's, it's really cool. Must have been insane. Oh yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. So gonna be, let's see, more like if anybody wants me to take them yeah <laughs> so uh so yeah we're gonna be we're gonna be doing that again this year so if anybody's in the area you know it's probably gonna be around the september 21st 22nd what we usually do is on the saturday we meet up at uptowns did i do a video on my visit I know Berg did. I might have had a, I might have had a little something. It's it's weird on meetups. I don't. I'm not always. I'm just. I'm always focused on. Uh, I'm always focused on just visiting and talking with people. I I don't always get the phone out and uh, and record stuff. But Berg for sure did a uh, a video on it uh, last this last September. So much fun. Let's see. Um. No, I guess not. I I met up with. Uh, I did a s couple of small videos from the area. I met up with Defiant uh, with Gribbly. Uh, from Defiant, you know, Gribbly, Gribbly's Folly, Max, used to be Defiant Pipes. I met up with him and did a little video, but from the actual meetup, I didn't have any uh, footage. Let's see. Message retracted. Let's see. Frog Morton Seller, that is. I don't know, I missed some, I missed some messages, Aaron, I'm, I don't have... The context. Share. A quick question for you, my wonderful wife snuck into my goodie book, wish book, and surprised me with a Peterson 302 and a tin of Balkan Sobrani. Have I tried it? I've not tried Balkan Sobrani. But if it's anything like Balkan Sassini, it's going to be good. Um, I've heard. It's just your standard Balkan. It's pretty good. So, 
should be pretty nice if you like uh, Balkan blends it'll be very nice uh, yeah we're getting reaching the end of this bowl let me see if I can see if I can get it let's see how's your search for the frog Morton cellar oh, okay frog Morton cellar replacement um I've got a lot of video, I've got a lot of suggestions on that that video that I put out called the uh, Frog Morton Replacement Project. I think personally, Moonshine's Triple X Blend is pretty good. It's close. And Bothy Flake from Sam Goweth, that's a... That's like a Virginia Latakia flake with a scotch topping, you know. Um, but Frogmorton Cellar is pretty unique, so there's gonna be a lot of uh, there's gonna be a lot of blends out there that'll scratch that itch. But if you want like a dead ringer or a, like a straight up match, I'm sorry, not gonna happen. But that's okay. There are tons of great tobaccos out there to enjoy. So I'm not going to stress. Kevin Twiner. Hey, Mayor. Got to go. Enjoy your time. Hope everyone has a great day, great night. All right, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you for showing up and just watching. Let's see. Bearded Piper, Moonshine Triple X, pretty good. Just bought some. Yeah. It's nice. I think I got some in uh, <laughs> Nashville a few years ago from uh, Moonshine Pipes himself. Let's see. Uh, yeah, Kevin, thank you so much. And thank you all so much for for interacting with me. It uh, means a lot. It's not the... It's not numbers that I'm chasing nothing like that I just enjoy the uh, I enjoy the interaction I enjoy the love uh, you people are such high quality people and I just can't uh, can't get over it. any recommendations on pipe tobacco for a newbie to try oh yes yes I do have some recommendations uh, I even have a, a video uh, addressing that but a lot of them were McClellan blends, so they're but they're and they're no longer in, um, they're no longer in existence. So, I like Hearth and Homes Chatham Manor. That's like a perfect beginner blend. Um, Hearth and Homes Magnum Opus is a really good. Uh, English blend, kind of an all-day smoke. It's just real tasty. Uh, if you want an aromatic, Lane 1Q. Hard to beat that. I'm not a big aromatic guy, but if you are, that's that's good. But I like Chatham Manor for the... It's just like a nice burly cocoa, all that good stuff. The fun is searching for the right tobacco, says Pie Tree. That's true. That is true, but you don't want to... You know, it's hard to... Let's see. If you didn't sell her much, I have 10, 100 gram tins of Frogmorton set aside. Wanting to try some quiet nights would gladly trade 10 for 10. Hmm. Well, I mean, I do have... I have five 100 gram tins of Frogmorton cellar set aside, for sure. And quiet nights is still readily available. So... I have to think about that. Let's see. I'm new to pipe smoking myself. To try everything straight, just to get a feel of what's what. Yeah, I mean, there's there's stuff out there that um, may be difficult if you're new, but there's always a workaround. You know, there's like like Virginia flakes, like brand you know fresh Virginia flakes that are like super moist. If you just pop open a tin of a Virginia flake and try to stuff that in your pipe. It's going to be terrible because it needs to dry out and you need to dry it out or and hopefully even let it age a little bit. 
So that will put you off of pipe smoking if you try something like that or if you get like a goopy aromatic and you try to stuff a pipe full of a of just a wet, moist, goopy aromatic and you're just getting it super hot trying to keep it lit and it's just a mouthful of steam and tongue bite, you're like, ugh, this is terrible. Who would ever smoke a pipe? <laughs> Stay away from straight purring. Amen. <laughs> so, and there's most tobaccos. Let's see, wanted to try Chatham Manor because you said it was good, Glenn. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Walter. Yeah. Oh, there's Simon. Yeah, I'm up late, but I work at night, Simon. <laughs> um, most tobacco, and this is a this is a good. Here's a little here's a little pro tip for you. Most tobaccos, if you prep them correctly, are great for beginners alike. Tongue bite is awful. See, I don't experience tongue bite that much but yeah it it can be bad so i like to recommend getting a tobacco that's like well behaved right out of the tin or right out of the bag um father dempsey by kramer's which is available at smoking pipes it's a real good stuff it's real good stuff let's see pipe tree love shortcut to mushrooms that's a good blend as well or er, I don't care for it, but it's like a good aromatic English crossover. It's got some sweetness. It's got like a flavoring, but it's also got the lot of Kia. And a lot of people like that as a replacement for Frog Morton Cellar. Morning me of mucker. I don't know what you're doing, Simon. I don't know what that means. All right. This beer, this beer is done. And my pipe is uh, is done. But I'm not done because I got another beer. Another Texas beer. This is from... Uh, the Martin House Brewing Company out of Fort Worth, Texas. And I lived in Fort Worth when I was seven years old for a time. <laughs> Let's see, my old mucker is a term of affection here in Blighty. I was saying hi to Tree in the vernacular. That's good to know. Because we all have our, uh, we all have our sayings um, that are familiar to us. But for others, it might be a little, you know, out of context, hard to understand. But I appreciate it. That's that's like another reason I like this. I get a lot of folks from all all over the world. Yeah, hence the explanation. Thank you. I do appreciate it. Um, we get folks showing up all over the world: Australia, England, Greece, Israel, Hungary, Japan. Let's see. Later, Derek. Got to go to work. Looking forward to the Hey, We're Talking podcast tomorrow. Yes. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, we're coming out with, uh, I think it's our new one-hour format. It's going to be once a week. We were doing these 30-minute episodes three times a week. Now we're putting together just like a once-weekly one-hour episode. But we got it stuffed. With good stuff. Well, I appreciate it. Appreciate you listening to the to the podcast. Oh, I'm always worried I'm getting overexposed because I spend a lot of time on the internet, on this channel, and on uh, Hey, we're talking, but. No one's told me to stop yet. So I'm just going to keep going. <laughs> the only one who seems to be annoyed by it is my wife. <laughs> but 
she's asleep right now, and I'm awake. So I'm not bugging her with my pipe smoking and beer drinking shenanigans. This is so good. And I'm getting that I'm getting that slight slight buzz. Aaron Van Pelt. Debauchery. <laughs> Let's see. If you like dark beer, you can get it. You can get it. You should try Boulevard Brewing Sixth Glass. A quadruple. I do like a quadruple ale. And we do have some uh, some Boulevard Brewing out here, but I don't know if if we have their quadruple. I do like that style of beer, though. It's very nice. This is just a regular Bach, 5.6% ABV, but I like it. It's one of the harder ones, it's one of the harder to find ones. You can imagine. Um, we have a fairly decent selection of beers here in my little town. But we have our limits, too. <laughs> I've got a lot of... Got a lot of farmers, oil field workers. You know, the... The vast majority of the folks around here, they want their... Their Budweiser, or their Miller, or their Coors. Or whatever. You know, the cheap stuff. But the interest in... Craft beer, micro brews, it's increasing. Excuse me. So that's nice. I'm, I'm happy for that. Let's see. Good to see you. I like the dark background. Makes me pop. Yeah. But he's got to warm a crust later. I'm guessing that means he's got to eat. Green M37 says hello. Hello to you. Can't beat a pint of warm ale. It's not quite warm, but it's getting up to room temperature. And it is good. And I do love a good ale. Would love to visit England and get some. Some beer. I don't know what the definition of import is anymore. I'm in... KC and Boulevard Brewery is an import and you're 30 minutes, 30 minutes away. Wow. I guess I know what it is. Anything that's not Budweiser, Miller, or Coors is an import. <laughs> or maybe Shiner. But I love Shiner. Or Yingling. I like that stuff too. I mean, I'll even drink that stuff if it's cold. I'll even drink a, you know, you, you can hand me a Miller Lite. If it's cold, I'm all about it. I'll drink it. I'm not gonna say no to a cold beer. That's, that's like un-American. That's not just un-American. So see, they finally have Yingling in Texas. Uh, not really. I might have seen some back east, but I've had some. I've had some Yingling before at one of my brother's weddings. Let's see, have you tried Casey Jones' last ride? Nope. Ice cold Milwaukee's beast. Low. <laughs> Another station to drive in Arkansas. Oh, to to, to bring some in. I do like. Yingling, yeah, be rude not to drink it. When my brother and his wife got married in Nashville a few years ago, he's from Texas, she's from Pennsylvania, so they got married, and the beers that they served was Shiner and Yingling. So I got my fill of both that day. It was a good day. I'm a good speaker, so I gave a great toast. I was nervous. Let's see. 
a beautiful wedding. It was indeed. It was a beautiful wedding. And not just because of the beer. I mean, it was, it was a good venue and it had great food. And the people were cool. But the beer made it made it good too. <laughs> so good. Oh boy. I just like that little that bit of warmth that just hits your that just hits your whole face when you've had a couple of beers. You're just like, mmm. I call that a buzz. It's the precursor to full-on intoxication. Which I'm not going to get. But I do like a good beer. And I like a good beer buzz. It's fun. I don't know why I set the beer down. I'm just going to have some more. <laughs> Missing the old school barracks parties now. Uh, I didn't do too many, too much of that when I was in. We were, I was too fit, too well behaved. Are you in the citrusing of summer ales or IPAs? They just seem to be much more refreshing. I do like um, some citrusy, tropically IPAs. I really do. I I like them. I'm a uh, I'm a fan. This uh, the Easy Peasy IPA it was very citrusy. Nice kind of grapefruit taste. And it wasn't too heavy. It wasn't yeah, it's like a nice sessionable IPA. I enjoyed it. Whew. Sometimes they go over the top, and even that's fine. Let's see, yeah, with the heat and humidity here in the summer, just what is needed. Yeah, we get heat here, but very rarely do we get the humidity. Let's see. Blue Moon is a great Belgian white, citrusy. I do like a little Blue Moon. I, uh, I do have some Texas wheat beers that I would probably take over that but if that was my only option excuse me I wouldn't turn it down <laughs> blue moon's the one they put the little fancy orange peel on the on the glass it's pretty good hmm this beer's good. I'm uh, working on brewing my own mead here at the house, which is home brew made out of uh, honey. Shot Top is also a pretty underrated beer also. Yeah, I like that too. I like it too. Yeah, but those beers are owned by the, by the bigger companies. So I don't drink beer all the time so I generally support I'll buy them from smaller companies usually Texas beers um, you know Deep Ellum, Martin Brewing Company, Rar and Sons, St. Arnold's uh, Real Ale Brewing Company a lot of good ones Big Ben Brewery let's see just trying to think availability yeah got a lot of good stuff here in Texas, but it's nice to be familiar with uh, the stuff that's available nationwide. Let's see, have I had Lone Star? I actually, I may have, but I don't really know. I, I can't remember. I kind of think that I thought Lone Star was pretty much picked up by like. Budweiser or somebody and just kind of brewing for them, you know, just they bought the name and is brewing, you know, just kind of macro 
brew beer under the name Lone Star. I don't know. If it's good, I'll I'll be happy to try it. But I don't drink beer tons and tons. So I'm usually looking for something like like a Shiner or just any kind of Texas beer. But I probably need to give Lone Star beer a, a, a chance. <laughs> but there's tons of breweries everywhere that are all over San Antonio, they're all over Austin, they're all over Houston, Dallas, Fort Worth, Fredericksburg. They're everywhere. And it's a beautiful thing. There's popping up all over the place. So. Well. Yeah, that, uh, <laughs> that nice beer warmth that's hitting my face, it's like, go ahead, Derek, lay down, take you a little nap or something. But I'm like, no, I got things to do. This will be my last, this will be my last drink of the evening. Got to take my son to school in a few hours, like. Four hours from now. So it would be irresponsible of me to have anything more past this one. And then I'll sleep today and then go to his baseball game sometime this afternoon. I don't even know where it is. And West Texas is so vast, it could be two hours from here. So I got to call the school and be like, hey, where's the game today? Anyway. Well. 410. And I've been on live for almost an hour. 10 a.m. there. Oh, yeah, the six hour difference. Let's see. Beer and alternative to Benadryl. <laughs> well, if beer took care of allergy symptoms, that would be. You, you have me sold, you know. <laughs> it's like I can't stop sneezing. Here, have a beer. For your health, sir. <laughs> You're like, yeah. Definitely do that. This is a good one. I really like this. Anyway. Let's see. Oh. Beers. Damn it. Damn it just blew coffee out of my nose. Oh, man. Yeah, coffee. That's another thing I love. Espresso, cappuccinos. I love it. Well, thank you, Briar Beard. I appreciate that. <laughs> we try to keep it fun around here. Let's see. Well, Mr. Tent, I wish your son a good game. Good night. Well, thank you, Aaron. I appreciate your time. And I appreciate all your time. Uh, I've been here, I've been on here an hour, and I think it's it'd be appropriate just to cut it off at the one hour mark. So, um, I appreciate everybody sticking around. These YouTube lives are a lot of fun. I get to hang with my friends, have a drink, have a smoke, and just shoot the bowl answer questions and talk it's so much fun briar beard good night to you good night to everybody i uh, appreciate your time so much uh, until the next time we'll do this again for sure
Thanks for watching. God bless and smell my beard.